Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about contraception and it's part of the human reproduction topic designed specifically for the IGCC biology specification. Again, it's applicable to all but it's specifically targeted for those who are studying for IGCC biology. Now, I pose my own students this very question that you see on the screen. How many forms of contraception can you name? Now, most students will be able to name most of the things I'm going to talk about in the video. But talking about the pros and cons of one against another is a little bit trickier to do because we, we know the names, but we don't think about the actual long-term benefits or restrictions that some of these have. So that's what we're going to do in that in this particular video. Now, if you just think about contraception generally, and what it is, it is designed ultimately to prevent a pregnancy from occurring. Now, it can help couples have no more children that they want, and it can also help keep a family size small, and ultimately that would help limit the increase in the human population. So it's not just designed to stop a pregnancy from occurring for a couple that potentially, or individuals that haven't had children before, it could be that to reduce the family size or actually they don't want any more children, that they would use methods of contraception. And in that particular specification, we also look at the effects of an increasing human population. So contraception is one method of doing so. One thing that is really key is it can massively reduce the risk of contracting sexually transmitted infections. That's one of the, the key reasons for contraception, other than preventing the pregnancy. Due to religious or cultural beliefs, some people, though, are prohibited from using any. Now, you can imagine that has a number of ethical and social implications. Uh, what we're going to do, I think, in this video is break down the four main methods we have because we can really classify these contraceptions into four types. The natural, the physical, the barrier and the surgical. So what we're going to do is just going to go through these uh, categories of contraception, talk about the pros and cons, how it works of each one. And then we're going to look at something called uh, the HWY value and it's a measure of the effectiveness of the contraception. So let's look at some of these. So move to the condom. Now the condom is what's known as a barrier method of contraception. It's placed over an erect penis to prevent sperm entering the vagina and it is safe to use if used correctly but you need to ensure that there's no sperm leakage from the condom and one of the great things about it is that it helps reduce the transmission of viruses like the HIV virus, the human immunodeficiency virus, and also gonorrhea infections. So there's our first uh, barrier contraception. Here we have the diaphragm. Now diaphragm usually is applied with spermicide and that's uh, the last of our barrier contraception. So we've got the condom, femidom and this diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is a thin circular sheet of rubber and it prevents sperm from entering the vagina. Now this is reliable if fitted correctly and used with spermicide which can be like a cream or a gel that kills the sperm. But one thing to bear in mind is that it must be the correct size and it's kept in for at least six or more hours. So obviously that uh, could cause a certain level of discomfort. But there we have the diaphragm, another barrier contraception. Here we've got the IUD or the intrauterine device. The IUD is a chemical method of contraception. It's a small plastic coated copper coil which may be left in the uterus for months or even years. Now this is quite reliable. It prevents implantation by irritating the line of the uterus. And that, however, can cause symptoms such as bleeding. But when we talk about implantation, we're talking about the fertilized egg cell or the zygote implanting or embedding into the uterus for development. So this IUD ultimately prevents that from happening. Here we have the IUS, it looks really similar to the IUD. This stands for the intrauterine system. It's very, very similar to the IUD. This one releases hormones, which ultimately will disrupt implantation of the egg cell that we've just mentioned. 
Now this again is quite reliable. It prevents implantation by once again irritating the lining of the uterus but it can also lead to the same symptoms as the IUDs such as bleeding. Regular hormone release can also affect mood overall. Now in another video about the menstrual cycle I've talked about particular uh, contraceptive hormones, the use of FSH, LH, estrogen, progesterone. I'm not going to necessarily in this video delve into too much of that but it's just something to be aware that this IUS uh, can have quite notable effects on mood. Here we have, again, it leads nicely into these contraceptive pills with hormones, or the pill. This is, again, a chemical method of contraception. And these are designed to ultimately prevent ovulation. And what they do is alter the lining of the uterus to prevent implantation of the egg cell. Now the pills either can either be combined, so oestrogen and progesterone, or just progesterone only. And what they do is kind of create a sort of negative feedback mechanism. They almost trick the body into thinking it's pregnant already by having such high levels of these uh, hormones, oestrogen and progesterone, inhibits further release of what's called FSH and LH. Now FSH ultimately helps to stimulate follicles and LH, luteinizing hormone, will release the egg from said follicle. So if we're inhibiting that, that's one method of contraception. Now again, these are effective as long as the pills are taken at the right time. These can cause unpleasant side effects. Now diarrhea and vomiting, uh, we would include in that. And they can actually remove the pill from the gut before it's uh, fully absorbed. So diarrhea and vomiting, not common, but it's just to note that actually if you are ill with diarrhea and vomiting, that can remove the pill and it means it's less effective. So here we have another chemical method of contraception. We'll move to the implant next. Now the implant and the injection ultimately refers to a capsule that is inserted beneath the skin or injections of these contraceptive hormones we've been talking about. Now this is useful for women who might forget to take the pill, but again this can cause mood swings and weight gain. So this is another, this is the fourth of our chemical methods of contraception. As you can see compared to the barrier, a little bit more effective. And the injection, as we've mentioned, this is the ultimate injection of these contraceptive hormones used when the pill uh, is deemed a sort of more difficult kind of option. So the injection far easier, lasts longer, and if you forget to take the pill, then this would be the route you'd ultimately go down. So let's look at the vasectomy. Now the vasectomy is a surgical method of contraception. It is a permanent method of contraception. It is 100% reliable, and there are no side effects. But it can be difficult to reverse, so it really needs real consideration. So if a man decides he would like children later down the line, there can be difficulty in reversing this process. So let's think what is actually happening. So in men, the sperm ducts are actually cut or tied, and that will prevent sperm from leaving the penis. So vasectomy is a permanent method of contraception because physically there will be no sperm being released. Now equally, this leads on to female sterilisation, so a female surgical method of contraception. Here, what we're going to do is tie or cut the oviducts or fallopian tubes. Now, when we do that, what we're doing is preventing eggs from travelling down those oviducts. So if we cut, as you can see in this image to the left, or tie, as you can see on this image to the right, then what we're doing is preventing the egg reaching from sperm, should there be sperm there. And that's known as female sterilisation. Once again, it is a permanent method of contraception. 100% reliable with no side effects. But like the vasectomy, this can be difficult to reverse. So you really need to consider if this is the option for you. And finally, this category, a bit more unusual. And it's one that people think a bit less of when they think about contraceptive methods. It's called the natural or the rhythm method. And there are three things that we can focus on here. Abstinence, monitoring body temperature and cervical mucus. Now, abstinence is simply avoiding sex completely or just avoiding sex when the egg is likely to be in the oviducts and that's known as the fertile period. Now, you can imagine, this would only work if menstrual cycles are regular and predictable. So therefore, it's quite an unsafe method. 
It's useful, though, if couples don't wish to use any other method of contraception. So if any of the barriers, so the condom, thermidom, diaphragm, the chemical, the IUD, IUS, the contraceptive pills, the implant, the injection, or even the surgical, the vasectomy and female sterilisation, if, if they are just not possible options at all, then abstinence could be the way forward. Equally, monitoring body temperature sounds a bit unusual, but ultimately, what you can do is monitor the body temperature and look for changes that occur at times of ovulation. And what it does allow, or what it does is allows women to find what's called a safe period when fertilization is not likely to occur. But again, temperature fluctuations are variable. So with that, you have to bear in mind that there could be many reasons why one's body temperature would fluctuate and it isn't necessarily a trigger of ovulation. And lastly, cervical mucus. You can check mucus coming from the vagina. It's a bit uh, a bit more liquid that you get close to the period of ovulation. Now that, again, can help to work out the period when an egg is unlikely to be fertilised. But it's generally unsafe. And it's not really, mucus isn't really a reliable indicator. So they have three things that would class as the natural or the rhythm method of contraception. So we've got the natural rhythm, the surgical, the chemical and the barrier. Now, just to finish this video, I want to look at uh, the effectiveness of these contraceptive methods. Now, as it says at the top, it depends on a number of things. We've got age, we've got religious beliefs and we've also got whether you need something long or short short term. So there's a variety of things that can affect how effective these contraceptions are. Now what we do is we look at the HWY value. So we actually look at how effective a contraception is in terms of the failure rate. So for example, if that contraception, method of contraception, has a very high failure rate, we know it's not very good. And if it has a very low failure rate, we know that it is very good and is very effective. And we measure by that by looking at the number of pregnancies likely if 100 women use the same method for one year. So 100 women, 100 women using it for one year, how many pregnancies would there be? Now clearly, if there's a lot of pregnancies, then that's not a very effective method of contraception. So let's actually look at some of these values. And I do ask my students this very same uh, question. So let's look at the failure rate in terms of number of pregnancies likely if 100 women use the same method for one year. What you find is actually if you don't use any methods of contraception at all you're looking at a failure rate of about 54. So that's to say 54 of those 100 women would fall pregnant. If we refer to the rhythm or natural method, so checking body temperature, uh, observing things like cervical mucus or just abstinence, then that failure rate drops down to 15. So we can see much more effective, but still you have 15 pregnancies out of 100. And contraception is designed to prevent those pregnancies. The condom gives us a failure rate of about 8 to 10. Which may seem surprising, so it's not the most effective method of contraception. The diaphragm is in fact a lot more effective, giving us a failure rate of about 2 to 3. The IUD, as I said, is really one to consider. It's a very strong, potent chemical method of contraception. It gives us a value roughly of about 1. So 1% 1 of people are likely to fall pregnant, 1 out of those 100. Equally, for the contraceptive pill, we get the same value. And I did say that sterilisation and vasectomy were permanent options, so understandably, these come out at 0 so they have, we've talked about the uh, types of contraception available uh, to you, the natural or rhythm method, the surgical, the chemical and the barrier. And we've discussed a little bit about the effectiveness of those methods. I've said that a few factors have influenced the effectiveness, but ultimately we can measure the failure rate to decide which one would be best. OK, hope all that helps.